I remember a couple of decades back when I think it was The Last Temptation of Christ was hit in the theaters. It was a bit of a hue and cry uh, on the part of the religious people about the way that Jesus was being portrayed. I remember watching a TV show where a fellow was interviewed. He was a lawyer, and I think he was acting on behalf of an evangelical church that was somehow in, engaged in some kind of legal action against the theaters or the producers of the movie or something. But he claimed to be an evangelical Christian that he, he went through a litany of his beliefs. He was a very dry looking character, you know, typical sort of corporate suit type person. And uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, yes, I believe that uh, Jesus Christ was the son of God. He was, uh, uh, he died, uh, rose to heaven, all that kind of thing. You know, the usual profession of faith. Um, and the thing that struck me was, I didn't believe him when he said that. He said it all rather woodenly, and uh, I thought, you know, he was paid to say that. Or, maybe, he just believes that he believes that, but he hasn't convinced me of it. He's convinced himself that he believes it, but he hasn't convinced me. Um, I don't think there's any way of verifying whether or not somebody else believes something. Uh, that line in 1984, they can torture you, they can make you do anything that they want you to do. They can make you say anything you want, that they want you to do, but they can't make you believe it. And you know, the interesting part about 1984 was, yes, they can actually, <laughs> but um, I didn't actually believe that this guy believed all of that. And uh, as I say, I had a lingering feeling that either he was just lying or he only convinced himself that he believed that. Now, I've often thought maybe nobody ever believed in religion ever since the whole idea came up. Maybe they just sort of sell the idea to themselves and suspend disbelief long enough to get themselves through this lifetime and never really have a tete-a-tete -tete with themselves to find out what they actually believe. Uh, the real point of this is, do you suppose such a thing is really actually possible? That you can just believe that you believe what you say you believe or what you tell yourself that you believe. You can fool yourself. Um, I think we do this all the time. My favorite example, I always bring this up. Uh, I step out, in the, out of my house in the morning, I look up and I see the sky. In my head, what I'm seeing is, is a canopy way above me or a layer of oxygen or something like that, um, or atmosphere that is a thing that's up there. It's not really a thing, it's just an amorphous whatever above me. Um, and I'm essentially looking up into space. But no, no, I'm looking up into that thing up there called the sky. So maybe in a way, maybe I understand that that's not really what's up there. But what I really believe is that there's a blue canopy up there, or gray as the case may be, depending on the weather. What do I actually believe the sky to be? I don't, I don't walk out every morning uh, heading to work, look up into the sky and go into a state of existential panic, but really when you think about it, you kind of should when you think about what the sky actually is. You look up into the sky on a clear day, you're, you've come pretty darn close to looking into eternity <laughs> every day. But we don't live our lives like that. We live our lives thinking that we've got things around us. Um, I believe right now that I'm in a building. I, actually, I'm just in a jumble of matter, energy, and empty space. Um, but do I believe that it's a jumble of matter, energy, and empty space? I kind of know that it is, but do I believe it? <laughs> what is belief? Is it something that's that precise? Can we actually uh, say that we believe anything convincingly? I'd say that we take certain things for granted provisionally, but I'm not really sure that we can always be sure that we actually believe what we say or think we believe. Um, if other people can sort of say, I doubt your faith, I don't, I'm not really sure that you actually believe this. And it's ironic that me, a non-believer, or as I call myself, um, putting a religious person on trial, this lawyer type who said that he believed that Jesus rose from the dead after three days of being in the tomb or whatever. Um, 
that I'm sort of putting him on, on trial in the same way that a non-believer would have gotten put on trial a few centuries ago for saying that he didn't believe or whatever, or he had to prove that he did believe something in spite of what he told everybody. Nobody believed that he believed what he said he believed. Now it's the other way around. The religious people are being sort of questioned, or I am, asking, do you actually believe all of that? You know, do, do, have you just made a deal with your own conscience? Or are you actually convinced of this? You don't put on a very good show. You're not, you're not all that convincing when you say that you believe all of this stuff. Do you convince yourself? <laughs> um, belief, I don't think, is ever cut and dried. I think it's always provisional. And I think that we, when we examine our own beliefs, ought to take our conclusions with a grain of salt. How do we really know what we're convinced by? Now, I'm not talking about arguing the universe out of existence again. I'm simply under, I'm trying to become clear on the understanding, on understanding what's going on in here. I just want to know what my own mind is doing. Um, th this kind of thinking doesn't scare me. Again, I don't fly into a state of uh, anxiety over thoughts like this. I suppose some people might. Perhaps a lot of people might. But this doesn't really bother me simply because, well, I'm standing on the floor this is still up, gravity is still here. I can panic or I can not panic, but I rather suspect at the end of the day, the world is going to remain pretty much the same as it ever was. So I have, I take solace or take, or I gain, gain confidence from the predictability of the world around me, even though I might sort of have something that can only be described as a sort of permanent state of cognitive dissonance between what I exist in practically every day and what I actually think is going on around me. You know, I, I enjoy sitting in coffee shops, drinking coffee and watching people walk around and do things. Uh, walking by, that kind of thing. People watching, I guess. I don't sit there like you read in Nausea, uh, wondering whether or not this cafe is actually existent, if it's actually real, or if it's, you know, that, it, that it's disgusting, that it, if it is real, this existence that's constantly around me. I don't, I don't see it that way at all, although I do question it. But on what level do I question it? Do I sit there and say, I'm not really sitting in a coffee shop, I'm just an amorphous mass of matter and energy, and so is this damn coffee shop, and so is my cup of coffee, and so are all these other people. This is all really weird, and I think I'm going to go into a state of shock, existential panic, something like that. That never happens to me. Because whether I panic or not, I rather suspect that it's going to be exactly the same in this coffee shop, regardless of what I actually believe is going on. So in a sense, maybe I am doing a, doing a deal with my own mind. Maybe I am sort of playing games with myself in order to reconcile a deep skepticism with, well, what looks for all intents and purposes like a coherent reality around me. <laughs> um, so really, at the end of the day, what do I believe is going on? Which reality do I actually exist in at any given moment? And do I even know? Um, I'm not sure that I do know. Um, again, it's, I, I think that most of us do this, if not all of us as humans, because a lot of the stuff that we do get taught in high school even sort of does throw all of this into question. Um, we know that we're this tiny speck on the outer edges of the Milky Way, which is a tiny speck in the universe of the multiverse or whatever, and yet when we stub our toes, we think that the world has ended. Um, there are levels of belief. There are levels of taking things as factual. There are levels of disbelief. There are uh, modalities, I guess, of, uh, of, of thinking. There are always buts built into everything, including our beliefs and our cognitions. So again, provisional reality is that I'm some guy working in an office building in a city um, with a rather repetitive job, uh, with a rather ordinary life. But, you know, when I let my mind go a little bit, um, I think some pretty darn weird thoughts. But at the end of the day, I still get up in the morning every morning, brush my teeth, drink my coffee, not in that order, go off to work, <laughs> uh, and live my ordinary life. So. I have two ways of looking at the world. Which one predominates? Which is the one that I act on? I know that this building that I'm in right now is only a configuration of matter and energy and empty space. And yet, I act 
on it being a solid thing. What do I believe this building is? Can I even answer that? Can I answer my own question? 